organization that has leaders who are focused on something bigger than just their own personal interests is a really powerful organization. And as you come into a new position as a leader at any level, probably the best thing that you can do to signal to the other leaders in the organization is that, hey, I'm in here to really contribute to something that is special and that I believe in. And I'm not just here to optimize for me, right? I'm willing to put my troops first. I'm absolutely willing to go whatever extra yard that I need to walk my talk. And every time you know that, that you come into contact with me, I'm going to be authentic. I'm going to have integrity, and I'm going to display a desire for accountability. You can wrap that together. You're going to be a great leader at, at whatever level in whichever organization uh, uh, that you serve. Welcome to episode 194 of the industry's leading business podcast for fitness owners and managers. Each week, we invite business experts, coaches, authors, and owners from around the world to share their expert advice with you, the FBP family. This month's interviews are brought to you by our podcast partner, Tribe Team Training. Tribe Team Training are the world-class leaders in small group training. You can earn unprecedented profit, gain guaranteed results for your members, and ensure the very best small group training for your coaches. To find out how you too can run a popular and profitable small group training department, go to tribeteamtraining.com or click on the link in today's show notes. Hi everyone and a very warm welcome to all of our FBP family right across the world. Whether you're a long-time listener or if you're new to the show, I'm so grateful for you choosing to join us here today. As some of you would know, I studied to be a personal trainer way back in 2008 and one of the very first pieces of equipment that I was taught to use was a TRX and it was also one of those things that never left my side during the years that I trained clients outdoors. Little did I know that 10 years after first getting introduced to TRX, would I have the opportunity to interview their founder and CEO of the company, Randy Hetrick. I'm pretty sure that his name is familiar to many of you, and I'm going to let Randy tell you the story of how TRX came to be. But to give you just a little bit more background on Randy, over the past three decades, he's built a record number of unique accomplishments, including collegiate athlete, Navy SEAL officer, entrepreneur, inventor, and CEO. In addition to earning a bachelor's degree from the University of Southern California and a master's from the Naval Postgraduate School Monterey, he also has an MBA from Stanford University's Graduate School of Business, where he's actually a contributing lecturer on entrepreneurship, branding, and leadership. And that is exactly where our focus is going to be for today's show. Because during my chat with Randy, we talk about leadership lessons to help your personal journey, the qualities of an outstanding leader, how a leader can earn the respect of their team, plus Randy shares advice for new managers to improve their leadership skills. Now, one last but very important thing for you all to know is that Randy is one of the keynote speakers at the Athletic Business Show 2018, which is actually coming up really soon in New Orleans on November 8th to 11th. Now, at the end of today's interview, Randy gives us a quick overview about his keynote session, plus I've included a link in today's show notes for the AB show so you can jump on, you can find out more information, and of course, you can register to attend. We are about to transition into the interview with Randy, but first, here's a message from our podcast partner. Tribe Team Training is a proven turnkey standalone profit center for your fitness business. For unprecedented financial results and to find out more, go to tribeteamtraining.com or click on the link in today's show notes. Enjoy this week's interview with Randy Hetrick. Randy, welcome along and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Chantal, for having me. I'm happy to be here. Now, TRX is one of the most successful and and recognized brands in the fitness industry today. For anyone that doesn't know the history of the brand, can you start off by telling us how you came about to invent TRX? 
Sure. I, I thank you for that generous description of our, of our brand. You know, one of the most successful, I don't know, but we're doing okay. And we uh, certainly are, are developing some recognition. So I'm happy with where we are. Uh, it, it's an unlikely story. I created this crazy harness during my 14 years as a Navy SEAL. I came up with this idea to train when we were on the road using body weight. And uh, whereas you could always do push-ups, you know, in some of the traditional body weight uh, exercises, it, it was harder without a pull-up bar to train the climbing muscles. And I had accidentally deployed uh, on an operation with my jiu-jitsu belt accidentally stuffed in my bag and I just started experimenting with it by throwing it over a door leaning back and lifting my body against gravity to simulate what it was like to climb up a caving ladder up the side of a ship and today we call that functional training right and uh, so that just uh, expanded my teammates started adopting it and asking me to make them for them and uh, and then I, when I left the SEAL teams, I thought it was kind of clever that, that my, my mates had uh, liked my gizmo. Uh, but I found myself at Stanford Business School thinking about business and discovered that the coaches there thought this was a cool idea too. And so, you know, if you're at business school thinking about business and you got this crazy idea, why not use that as, as the test bed and the launch pad? And that's what I did. You know what? I mean, this isn't one of the questions, but I can just imagine that there's a lot of fitness professionals out there that are thinking, man, I, I'm inspired by that. Like that's a big deal to go from concept to actually creating something. I mean, what advice would you give to anyone that's in that stage where they've got an idea, um, maybe a fitness product of some sort? How do, how do you go from idea stage to actually holding something tangible in your hands? Well, I mean, that, of course, is the $10 million question, right? <laughs> because one, one of the pieces of advice that I now understand that I'm happy to share is that, and I don't mean this to be, uh, to be discouraging, it's just good to know that the idea is the easy part. I mean, it really is the case. I, I have lots of people come up to me on a regular basis and say, you know, oh, I had an idea to use ropes for years ago. Like, and, and I tell them, I'm sure you did. It's just you didn't develop the idea. And, and that's because the developing part is really challenging. And I think that that said, yeah, if anybody's story should inspire others that like no idea is too stupid to pursue, uh, it should be me. Because when I first started this out, you know, it was as my, my the dean of Stanford Business School, uh, who I asked to do an interview with the San Francisco Chronicle, one of the first PR hits we'd ever had, his, his comment was, yeah, I thought he was crazy. Uh, you know, it's a seatbelt with stirrups on the end. And I told him to go do something else. And that is the fact. That is That made it into the Chronicle with our first PR piece. And he wasn't completely wrong, but he was at least partially wrong. <laughs> How long was that actual journey from the time that you were in Stanford that that idea was born to the time that you actually launched as a, as a business? It was the better part of 18 months. I mean, it, it really took me, which was another shocker, right? I thought, okay, I'm coming out of Stanford Business School. I'm just going to hit the ground running. Well, what I learned is that business school teaches you, you know, 10,000 foot view of, of life, of business. And uh, what you need on the day that you start something as an undercapitalized startup is you need this very grass level uh, information that I didn't get in business school. And so I had to go out actually another book that I, that I recommend that I'm reminded of from your question is there's a book called concept to market. Mm -hmm. And uh, it talks about exactly the kinds of, you know, low level unsexy details that you absolutely have to answer these questions before you can move forward. So I, I got a lot of my, my sort of startup uh, information out of that book. Well, I guess that sounds like the reality of the situation. As you said, you need, you need to be aware of the reality of, of, you know, what it takes to go through what you've gone through. Now, Randy, a lot of what you do these days, of course, is, is educate and talk on leadership. And that's one of the big areas that I was hoping that we could dive into today, because when you were telling the, the story about how TRX came to be born, essentially, you obviously touched on the fact that you, you were um, a Navy SEAL. So I'm interested to understand through your experience as a Navy SEAL, 
What's one of the most important leadership lessons that you learned during that time? Well, one of the very most important, I think, in any context is that a leader, it sounds trite, but it is absolutely valid in, in my experience, is a leader's got to lead by example. You know, you've got to be able to walk your talk because I think the the number one thing that a team, any team, will indict its leadership for is inauthenticity, right? You can make a lot of mistakes, and Lord knows I have, uh, of all kinds, but as long as the folks that you are hoping will join your effort and follow your leadership, as long as they believe that you are genuine, you're authentic, and you're not ever going to ask them to do something that you wouldn't or haven't done yourself, that goes a long way, right, in, in building a team. And, and you know, then the things that, that I, I also learned that you really have to screen for as you're building a team is integrity and accountability, because with those two qualities, you can build, you know, I, I, you'll notice that that deep domain expertise is not in that top two, right? Because domain expertise is one of these things that for most positions can be acquired. What's much harder to fix is a cat that has no integrity or refuses to, to be accountable. Those are, in my view, sort of critical flaws uh, that, that make it impossible to, to build a team uh, without. Would you say, Randy, that have you had any changes to your strategy as a leader as the TRX team and as the brand has grown over years? I have for sure. Uh, I mean, I think any leader that wants to remain relevant, you know, much less sort of reach some level of success, you have to constantly be observing, learning, and and being you know willing to adapt your style. Uh, for instance, when I I came out of a you know pretty alpha male, I mean about as alpha male environment as you could ever imagine, right? In the Navy SEAL teams and. You know, I had a bunch of people who I frankly took for granted their level of commitment, their level of talent, their level of resourcefulness and drive. And they were also very thick skinned. And you had to be thick skinned as a leader because there's a lot of just dogs fighting in a, you know, in a pen to show who is the alpha. Well, transfer that out into the civilian world where you've got, you know, a mixed gender organization and people who are not as dedicated as Navy SEALs to your mission, right? They, they have other lives and other priorities and they're not going to burn themselves to the ground. Well, having the same style of leadership and trying to apply that in both contexts equally would be doomed to fail quickly. So I had to become a much more, you know, a kinder, gentler, and, and frankly, I had to become a little more, it sounds terrible, but it, I think it was part of staying sane, I had to lower my standards of expectation a little bit so that I didn't grind my teams to bits on the TRX side of, of my, you know, uh, book. That's, that's so fascinating because I see what you're saying is that you had to, you had to learn based on the people that you were working with in a new environment. And you already have touched on a couple of books that, um, that have influenced you along the way. Was there any particular, I guess, resources or industry conferences or mentors or people that you reached out to during that phase as you were, I guess, as, as you were growing as a leader, as your team was growing, are there any resources that you, you went to at this stage? Well, I mean, I, I'm a voracious sort of observer and I, and I model, you know, I've, I've watched, there, there were some icons that I, that I sort of watched and, and appreciated. One of the guys that, that I was a big fan of is Richard Branson. And, and I, the reason that I like him is that the guy has figured out, first of all, he had, probably understands the power of a brand more than any other, you know, leader that I can think of on that. He's taken the, the brand and applied it to all these different contexts and figured out how to make it successful and monetize it. But he's also, you know, a guy who obviously uh, was successful in delegating because he's spends a lot of time externally facing. He seems to engender a lot of affection from the folks within his organization. So I've watched him. Uh, you know, there, there, are, there are others that I've watched, not only for good reasons, but for bad examples. Learn what not to do. <laughs> yeah, what not to do. But I also listen a lot, frankly, to, to my, you know, the leaders, the other leaders in my organization 
And I try to keep an open mind. You know, and everybody is the easiest thing in the world, right, to be a critic. That's one of the things that I have learned over my life. Really easy to sit and, you know, trash talk somebody or gripe about what isn't. Um, and, you know, that tends to turn people off and make them turn their ears off sometimes. And I've tried to take it on board when, when you know, critical stuff is inbound and try to figure out, all right, well, so whether or not this person's right, clearly my style or my, my communication uh, was not effective. And so if, as I believe, my job is to field a great team that is, for the most part, happy with what they do, then I got to figure out how to crack that code, right? Or I'm not going to be a good leader. And that's kind of the, the loop that I play to myself. Anytime I'm inclined to, you know, tell somebody to buzz off, you know, I step back and I go, all right, clearly they are not getting my message. And it means I must not have been effective in communicating. And, and so, you know, I guess it's a lot of school of hard knocks, maybe, Chantal. Um, Randy, we've, we've touched on this throughout the interview already. And I know that you mentioned some of those qualities that are important to you as a leader, things like authenticity and accountability and integrity. Are there any other qualities that you feel an outstanding leader should possess? You have to be resourceful and you got to be tenacious. Those are two, you know, people have asked me, hey, what are you really good at, right? And, you know, I, I, it's, a, it's a bit of a stumper. And then I, I sort of got to, well, I am as, you know, resourceful as a coyote and as tenacious as a cactus plant. And, and those probably are my two best qualities as a leader. And, and so those have, you know, helped me that and, you know, trying to be empathetic and, uh, but you got to be resourceful and you got to be driven. Otherwise leading is a little bit of a grind, you know, and, and if you don't like that, then you're going to struggle. And Randy, I know that you, you, earlier you mentioned how important that authenticity piece is in relation to earning the respect of your team essentially is, is ensuring that you're authentic and that you, I think you said that you walk the talk, walk the talk. And did I get that right? Walk the talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that you, you know, you show them that you can do everything, everything that they've done. So are there any other pieces of advice you would give us around how a leader can earn the respect of their team? Well, I think another thing that I learned in the SEAL teams and, and uh, it's in every talk that I ever do on leadership is, uh, you know, there's this old idea of letting the troops eat first. And it's, it's, it's actually a, it's a fun phrase, right? When you think about it, because it, it really is profound. It's simple, but profound. And it, it really speaks to, Hey, if, if you want to be respected as a leader, you have to show the folks that are working for you that you care about them, right? You care, you care about them as people. You don't, they're not just a, a piece of furniture, Right. And and I think that a little bit of a little bit can go a very long way to show folks that, hey, I'm not jumping in the headline every time just because I can. I actually probably have done the opposite, maybe to a fault. Certainly, if you ask my family, they would agree with this, that, you know, I was the last guy to get paid when I started the company. I worked for almost four years for no pay uh, because I couldn't afford to pay the others that I needed and pay myself. And, you know, I could have and maybe should have moved earlier uh, to take some of it, but, but I could survive and I did. And, uh, you know, I think people respected that. And, and so little gestures like that to put your troops first go a very, very long way as a leader. You just touched on something which is is really I wasn't going to cover in this interview, but I think it's really important because so many fitness professionals end up in this industry because they're passionate about something, because they're following a dream. And, uh, and quite often I know that a lot of people don't last, they don't have a long career because they don't nece- they're not necessarily successful in the first year or two years. And you just mentioned that there was four years before you actually paid yourself. And I know me personally, when I transitioned out of corporate into, into doing this, it took me three years before, you know, anything started to happen. I think that's a really important message for people out there. And that is that it takes an awful lot of hard work and time and investment to actually get to, to where you want to go to. Would you agree with that? I, I would. And I, th- I think it's a good piece of advice to give, you know, folks who are contemplating 
starting a business is that you really got to make sure that a couple of the conditions are right because I, you know, was able to start the business with my spouse was employed, had a, you know, a steady job that could keep a roof over our head. I mean, it was just barely making it, but I was able to then externally finance uh, TRX, you know, using other people's money who were incentivized based on, you know, a, a return at some point in the future. And, you know, without that, without that kind of minimal safety net, the experience would be more desperate. <laughs> and believe me, you don't need anything to make an undercapitalized startup more desperate. You actually need, you know, you need to have an element of, of, of safety net somewhere that if things go wrong, right, you're not on the street with a can. Right. And, and so I think that's one of the things that people should think about before they start is, hey, what is my safety net? How how am I going to float this if, if things take longer than I expected, cost more than I projected? Because both of those things will happen. Right? <laughs> and, and how do I survive it without without becoming desperate and doing things that are not in the best interest of the company that I'm trying to build? And now for this week's Fitness Foration. So, Randy, to finish off today, can you leave us with three pieces of advice that you'd give a new manager who is looking to improve their leadership skills? Well, yes. Uh, So I would go back to some of the things I said earlier, but add to them a bit. Number one, you know, as a new leader, come in and above all all other things, be authentic because uh, you can be forgiven for a lot of errors if people believe that you're for real. And if you're not, you could be really good and an organization will spit you out as a fraud. So first, be authentic. Uh, second, I really believe that you know, walking your talk matters uh, a lot to people. So lead by example. Show people that you are willing to get your hands dirty, do the work, learn. Don't profess to know everything because none of us do, no matter where we are in an organization. Um, And then the third piece, uh, I I think, would be something that I also take from the SEAL teams, which an organization that has leaders who are focused on something bigger than just their own personal interests is a really powerful organization. And as you come into a new position as a leader at any level, probably the best thing that you can do to signal to the other leaders in the organization is that, Hey, I'm in here to really contribute to something that is special and that I believe in. And I'm not just here to optimize for me, right? I'm willing to put my troops first. I'm absolutely willing to go whatever extra yard that I need to walk my talk. And every time, you know, that, that you come into contact with me, I'm going to be authentic. I'm going to have integrity and I'm going to display a desire for accountability you can wrap that together, you're going to be a great leader at, at whatever level in whichever organization uh, that you serve. Wow, that is such a great piece of advice, Randy. Thank you so much. And I mentioned right at the very beginning of today's episode that, of course, you are the keynote of the Athletic Business Show that's coming up in November this year. I cannot wait because it means that I get to meet you and I get to see you do the keynote. So do you want to just tell us a little bit about the session that you're going to be presenting? It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I, you know, I've spent a long time as it turns out. I don't know how I got so old so fast, but literally probably 35 years in leadership positions between competitive athletics, a long SEAL career as, an, as a SEAL team officer, and then, and then as an entrepreneur and now CEO of a you know, mid-sized high growth company. So I learned a lot along those, that path in different contexts. And what, what I'll be sharing uh, at Athletic Business Conference is some of the lessons that I learned uh, as a SEAL that I used every single day uh, as an entrepreneur and a CEO at, at TRX. And then I'm going to share a little bit of uh, you know, some entrepreneurial uh, war stories and hope, a whole bunch of inspiration for anybody who is currently working on a business or might ever think of it. 
Well, I cannot wait for your session. And uh, for anyone that hasn't yet checked out the information around the Athletic Business Show, I will make sure that we put details in today's show notes. We'll put links for you to register, to come along. It's happening in New Orleans in November. I'm really excited about it. Randy Hedrick, thank you so much. It has been just such a thrill having you on the show. I'm really grateful for your time and thank you so much for joining us all today. Thank you for having me and I will look forward to seeing you in New Orleans in November. MyZone is a wearable technology platform that leverages personal goal setting, gamification, and social platforms to motivate your members. To find out more, go to myzone.org. Precore Quick Fire 5. It's such a pleasure to be welcoming along today's guest, Robert Garish. Welcome to the Fitness Business Podcast. Thank you so much, Chantal. I'm absolutely delighted to be with you. We start off each of our shows with a pre-call quick five five. So do you want to tell everyone why do you do what you do? Oh gosh. Well, I do what I do because frankly, I love helping people create smart little lifestyle led businesses. By that I mean I'm not talking about businesses where everyone lies around in a hammock all day long, but I'm talking about a business that allows you to live and work how you want to live and work. That's what I've dedicated my most of my adult life too and it's, it's what I enjoy doing. And what's one ritual that helps you become better at what you do? Well apart from drinking a lot of caffeine, which <laughs> I'm just gonna have a sip of in a minute. You and me both. Uh, actually, yeah. yeah, my main thing is I guess my one ritual is clearing my head and I do that primarily by walking. So, you know, I used to go to the gym a lot. But these days, I tend to walk a lot more. And um, I just find that action I find very meditative and uh, clears my head. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of my one ritual, I guess. That's a great ritual. And are there any apps or systems that you would use to stay in control of your workload? Yeah, look, I'd, I wouldn't say an app. What I tend to do, my, I use a very old-fashioned app. I'll show it to you. It's called a pad and a pencil. <laughs> um, I'm somewhat old school. Never breaks down that one. It never breaks down and you can take it with you and I don't need power. But I, what I do, the, the one thing that I do is, I, is I'm really clear on my priorities and my actions. So, you know, I, I know what I need to do. I know what I need to focus on to get where I want to go. And uh, so I write stuff down. That's my main thing. And are there any books, podcasts or blogs that you would recommend and why? Gosh, yes. Well, there's a couple. Uh, One of the books that I find extremely useful uh, is a book written by um, an Australian author, Sarah Edelman, and it's called Change Your Thinking. And what it does in a very wonderful way, I think, is it helps you understand that the one thing that you can change, that we can change, is how we think about things. And how we think about things will determine how we action things and the steps that we take. And I find that book really valuable. Um, I have a, you know, a little flick through of it fairly regularly. I've got a little summary that I keep on my computer. It's something that I share with people. And if you just look at how you think about things, change the way you think about things, it can really impact your effectiveness and your state of mind. We will be sure to put a link to that book in today's show notes and give everyone just a little bit of a sneak peek about what we're going to be focusing on during your main interview next week. Well, look, I reckon what we should be talking about is uh, the kind of what you need to do to really market and promote an effective business. And, you know, it pains me hugely when I hear about businesses that don't succeed And some research that was done quite recently in the US showed that the main cause of failure, this was in a series of businesses that had a high degree of funding, each had over a million dollars invested in them. And these were businesses that had failed and they failed because they didn't have a need, no market need. So that's what I reckon we should look at is, you know, what do you need to do to find out who your market is and keep your business full of those people? And it's probably a good time for me to let everyone know, of course, that you have just released your most recent book, which is called The One Minute Mm. Commute. And we are well and truly going to be diving into that. Oh, and for those of you that are watching our video, we have a a copy on screen right now. So Mm. The One Minute Commute, we're going to be diving into that as well and uh, and having a look at a few sections within your book. And I'll be putting to that in today's show notes. So Robert, thank you for joining us today for the pre-call Quick Fire Fire. Thank you. 
Before we finish off today, a reminder that all the resources, the links, and of course, a transcript for today's show can all be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. A big thank you to our founding partner, Active Management. If there's a hole in your lead bucket, you'd fix it. Our founding partner, Active Management, will help you plug the hole in your online lead generating channel with a free download at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash active. Thank you for joining me for another week of the show. I'll see you next week. And remember, what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into lives of others. 